launched Show Big Itchy the Red Card in 2009, but for the last two years we've been out working in schools, um, delivering anti-sectarianism workshops as part of several local authority partnerships that we've had over the last two school years. So what we've really done is look at stereotypes, we've looked at the role of the media, and most importantly we've looked into the history of sectarianism. What place does politics and religion have in sport? None. Nothing. You know, there's so many factors and influences on us, especially um, looking at the media, seeing the different headlines that are in newspapers that are day in, day out, and how they actually um, affect young people, even without them particularly purchasing newspapers. And one of the way we kind of pulled that idea out and, and really kind of sort of helped to sort of change minds was to look at the teenager stereotype. And the first question that we asked the young people when we started was What percentage of young people? do you think are involved in crime? Okay, we're talking up to the age of 18 years old in the whole of the United Kingdom, what percentages? And the, the answers we were getting were upwards of like 90%, 80%, 8 in 10, 9 in 10. Um, and when I actually told them that the real figure was around 5.2, they were shocked and they really readily agreed when I said, you know, you are young people, you, you belong to that group. However, even we are misinformed about the group that we belong to. So imagine how misinformed we may be about groups that we know less about, whether they're a different nationality, a different religion, Celtic, Rangers fans, Catholics, Protestants. So I really could see that, that, that the penny had started to drop. I think it's something we don't normally do in school, so it's good to have a particular focus on it. What it does is it gives them an opportunity to talk about their own background, their own beliefs, their own views on things, particularly with regards to sectarianism, its causes and the consequences of sectarianism, particularly in Glasgow. So today we did um, a whole range of activities looking at the, the issue of sectarianism. We started off with an activity that we call New Neighbours um, and that gave the young people an opportunity to choose from six different people that they'd like to live next door to um, and they had to give their reasons why. Um, so we were looking into why we would choose one person over another person. The reveal at the end of, of the, the activity was that it wasn't in fact six different people, it was one person. Um, and we looked at this notion of stereotypes and how we, we judge people based based on perhaps one single bit of information that we have um, about them. So I think that, that you, it was clear that that worked really well today um, and the feedback that we got from the young people was excellent and it certainly really made them think. Okay, so we've just participated in a focused um, interactive educational and sectarianism workshop. What do you think is one of the main things that you have learned from that today? Holly? Well, I thought like Catholic schools were more for Catholics, not everybody, but now We've had that discussion. If anybody can go to a Catholic school and anybody can go to any school that they choose to go to. Brilliant. What about you, John Paul? Um, it's not just about Rangers and Celtic or football teams, it's to do r religions. I've learned that it's your own choice. You don't have to be Protestant to be a Rangers fan, you don't have to be Catholic to be a Celtic fan, and it's really got nothing to do with football teams whatsoever. I think all young people in Scotland would benefit from this because they are tomorrow's generation, their generation of the future, and we want to have children who are um, effective contributors who can take part in the debate in society. What I would like to see is this part of the whole school curriculum so it easily fits into the health and wellbeing strands and things that can be done in secondary schools such as through PSC, through RME, it can be addressed. I think the unique thing that Show Bigotry and Show Racism, the red card does, is it brings in professional footballers and brings in relevant experts and it enriches the curriculum in a way different to what a teacher would normally do it. So we're hoping that, you know, we're out speaking to young people, um, like we challenged racism 20 years ago, we're hoping that these young people, the future generations out there holding positions of authority in the future, having families of their own, can then take that knowledge that they've learned um, and make a positive effect and change into, into their communities and into their families.